in this third item on the first exam in statics of fall 2014, we're asked to find the force in the hydraulic cylinder BD that it exerts on pin B when the angle theta is 65 degrees, and that theta is the orientation of the rod ABC. So we, here's our hydraulic cylinder BD, and we're reminded that it's a two-force member. We know that by looking at the diagram because it's pin connected to either end and it has no other internal applied force, so therefore it must be a two-force member. So the first thing I would do always here um, is to consider the freeway diagram and see where that leads me. See, it's really a brainstorming kind of step and oftentimes it's going to tell me all the other pieces of information that I might need to do or maybe how simple the problem might be. It's going to turn out that this particular problem is in some ways a little bit, well, definitely more complex than the other ones on the exam. So if I'm going to pull off a free diagram, if I want B, the, the, the force on pin B, then I'm going to want to pull this hydraulic cylinder uh, BD and I want to when I separate these things, I want to pull out ABC because that's where the applied force is. That's sort of the hint that that's the, the way that I really want to do that. And so here's our 600 pound force. All my forces will be in pounds, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Pull the pin at C. I'm not going to show arrows. I'm just going to show that I've got two there and try to predict what's going to happen here. Now, if I'm trying to go out to the tip and put that tip on there. It's going to want to attempt to rotate ABC in a counterclockwise fashion, which is going to want to squeeze the hydraulic cylinder. It's going to want to push back on BD. I'm sorry, it's going to push back on ABC. And I'm just trying to get in here relatively the right geometric angle. There's that force that I'm really looking for. Hmm, it's two forces two force, so it's going to be directed right along that, that line of action of, of BD. Hmm, that might be important to note, so I'm going to go ahead and put a dashed line down to point D, even though that's not on the free by diagram, that may be, become useful. I don't have any other um, symbols on here, so I'm just going to go ahead and call this force F, and then the reaction, now I can kind of see, okay, BD is going to be pushing upwards to the left on ABC, so therefore it's got a leftward uh, X component. That means CX is going to have to be going to the right. And as I think about, if I were to have only moved point C or pin C here, this whole thing would have rotated and tried to, to go in clockwise, uh, counterclockwise fashion, which would have pulled C up. That means that CY has to be holding it down. And so that's why I, I can kind of anticipate what's going to happen with these internals. Whether I want them or not is a different question. I, now I also look at the geometry that we have here. I know the length of A to B and C. There's 27 plus 45. That total length is added up to 72 inches. Right, that's going to be a useful thing to probably have at hand. But all I know is that the vertical distance from C to D is 24. And, hmm. I don't know any angles here of BD, and there's nothing easy to, to figure that out. So I'm immediately thinking that I can get away with, since all I want is force hydraulic cylinder, all I have to do is some moment at point C to get it. I'll get a 600 times some perpendicular distance, and then in the opposite direction, I'm going to get this guy rotating around. Yeah, all right, so I, I'm going to need to know what this angle is. I have to break that apart somehow. Right. Or, hmm, well, there's a lot of different ways I could solve this. I'm starting to think, hey, you know, if I resolve this down here into an fx component and fy component, get rid of that so that now I'm, I'm not double counting anything. This is convenient because I do, oh, wow, I, I know a lot of things here that will turn out to be very convenient. I know that distance right there, that's 24 inches, and I know the length here is 72 inches with an angle of 65 degrees. Okay, so actually I can do some equilibrium equations here. I can at least find out the x component of the force that I'm interested in, 
and so we'll let's see here. Well, some moments about point C. Let's take clockwise as positive, and so we'll have. Let's see, some moments about point C, that means the 600 is going to want to spin in a counterclockwise fashion. That's negative in the equation, so that's minus 600 times. Let's see, the moment arm is going to be this perpendicular distance. Okay, so that will be, oh, all right, so that's 72. The 65 degrees is over here. So that's opposite of the 65. All right, so that's... 72 times uh, opposite, so that'd be sine of 65. And then I'm going to have plus 24 inches times fx. That whole thing is going to be set equal to 0. So my x component that I seek is 600 times 72 times sine of 65 divided by 24. And we can get that worked out. 600 times 72 divided by 24 times 65 sine equals 1631.4. Okay, so all right, I have that, but I need to figure out how these two resolve themselves so that their line of action is in this line from BD. So that's where I am still stuck. I have to go look at this geometry that we've got. Right, so this, there's no cheating here. There's, this is going to just take a little bit to get it all uh, worked out. So let's lay out then B to C, C to D, and then of course B to D you'll have then 65 degrees outside, inside you'll have 115 degrees. I know that C to D is 24 inches and I know that that's 45. I want this angle down in here. That's what I really want. Let's call that alpha. That's what I'd like to find. I should say sine of the sine law 45 over sine of alpha is equal to 24 over f, but I don't know that angle. I know this one here, the 115. Oh, but I use law of sines if I only knew that one right there. Right there. And so that's what I'll do. Then we'll go figure out that bd squared equals the two opposite ones squared, 45 squared plus 24 squared minus 2 times 45 times 24 times the cosine of this opposite angle of 115 degrees. And really what we want is just BD, not its square. So we'll get take the square root of that. And when we do that, we find out that BD is 59.277. Now I'll care about it. It's usually in this. I'll even write down that. I'll keep it retained in a, the uh, calculator. And then I'll... Uh, write down even more than what I might normally do, so I don't lose any unnecessary numerical accuracy here. Right, and then sine of alpha. Right, that's what I'm really after. Over the opposite one is 45 equals the sine of 115 over this length here, 59.277. So for sine of alpha equals 45 over 59.277 times sine of 115 degrees, right? And so uh, that would be 45 divided by 59.277 times 115 sine <laughs> equals 0.688. And the inverse of that will tell me that alpha is 43.47 degrees. Right. Great, that's what I need to know to then finish off this problem. Because now to find the force of the hydraulic cylinder BD on pin BD, then what 
we need to do is just do the simple. Okay, I've got fx, fy. I'm looking for that resultant where the angle that I just got done calculating, alpha, is with respect to the vertical. So therefore, f, oops, should have been pink. F is going to be equal to, well, fx would have been equal to the opposite here, so that's that sine. It's opposite of alpha, so sine of alpha times, oh, okay. So it will be fx over sine of alpha, which actually I already know what that numerical value is, but I'll, I'll write that all in. Uh, fx was 1631.4 divided by sine of 43.47. Luckily, I kept it in the calculator, so I just hit sign again, hit reciprocal, and then times 1631.4, and we get 2371. Our units are pounds, and so our answer then, again, only four digits are written here, but, uh, and of course it goes on and on, but uh, remember, it starts with a two, not a one. So we only want three digits out of this. So our final answer then is going to be that our force from BD on the pin is equal to 2,370 pounds or 2.37 kips. And although it's really not necessary what one could do, Let's put the direction here that we know what that direction is going to be. From a practical standpoint, we actually don't care. But if you wanted to be complete, you would round that angle from four, up to 43.5 degrees. Again, three digits because it's not a number that starts with a one.